We are so glad that you can join us today for our AOP Kids Easter special. Today we wanted to take some time to talk about why we celebrate Easter. The Easter weekend is a time where we remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for us when he died on the cross and when he was resurrected from the grave three days later. The word sacrifice means to give up something for the sake of someone or something else. The word resurrection refers to when Jesus came back to life after being killed on the cross. These are two important words that we want you to remember as we go through our story today. Today's story can be found in Matthew chapter 27, verse 32 to 66, and chapter 28, verse 1 to 20. So grab your Bible and let's dive into today's story. The story of Easter. Jesus' sacrifice. This is Jesus. hey -o! who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like calming storms and even raised people from the dead. The Jewish leaders and teachers did not like what Jesus was doing or how he claimed to be the Son of God. And so they made a plan to arrest him to get rid of him once and for all. Judas, one of Jesus' disciples, agreed to betray Jesus come in, come in. and give him over to the religious leaders for some money. Jesus was in a garden praying, and Judas showed the man who Jesus was. Jesus was arrested and taken to the rulers of the land so that they could decide what to do with him. Jesus was presented before the high council, and they asked him if he was the Messiah, the Savior of the Jews. They asked him if he was claiming to be the Son of God. You say that I am. <laughs> And the council was furious and they shouted that Jesus was guilty and he deserves to die. So they took Jesus before the Roman ruler Pilate and he heard the case against Jesus. Pilate didn't think that Jesus had done anything wrong. Huh, seems okay to me. They found him to be innocent, so Pilate said, that he would punish Jesus and then release him. What? But the crowd kept screaming louder and louder, crucify him, we want him dead. And because of the pressure of the crowd, Pilate turned Jesus over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. Jesus was hurt and spit on, his clothes were torn and taken from him, and a crown made out of thorns was put on his head. He was beaten so badly that he could barely stand on his own, and then he was forced to carry his cross so far up a mountain that he needed help because he could not do it on his own. Once Jesus made it to the place where he would be crucified, called the skull, the soldiers around him nailed him to the cross and waited for him to die. While Jesus was hanging on the cross, many people shouted to him, If you really are the Son of God, save yourself from the cross. But Jesus knew he had to die to forgive his people for their sins. At noon, darkness fell across the whole land. Three hours later, Jesus took his last breath and finally died. At that very moment, the curtain in the temple that separated the priests from God's holy place tore in two. A soldier watching the whole thing said, This man truly was the Son of God. Then a righteous man named Joseph came and placed Jesus' body in a tomb. Three days passed and it seemed that there was no hope. But very early on Sunday morning, the woman who cared for Jesus went to go visit his body and found that his tomb was empty and that he was no longer there. Ah! Don't be afraid, 
said an angel. He is not here. He is risen. At this, the woman remembered that Jesus had told them that he would rise again on the third day and ran to go tell the disciples what they had seen and heard. Huh? hey -oh. Ah! And then for the next 40 days, Jesus appeared to his disciples and many others and showed them that he was alive and well. He taught them that what he did was the only way that they could be forgiven and be with God forever. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. is both heartbreaking and absolutely beautiful at the same time. It's heartbreaking to think that Jesus was hated so much by people that they wanted to kill him. The reason they hated Jesus is because they didn't believe that he was the son of God. They were so convinced that Jesus was not who he claimed to be and therefore they decided that they should get rid of him by killing him. Not only were there people who wanted to get rid of Jesus, but one of Jesus' closest followers betrayed him. Our closest friends are supposed to look out for us and protect us, but this friend of Jesus was only looking out for himself. Instead of trying to warn Jesus of what would happen, he decided to take money from the people who wanted to get rid of him. I know, this all sounds like a big scheme, but Jesus actually knew that all of this was going to happen. After all, he is the son of God. Jesus knew that Judas, his friend, would betray him, and he knew that there were people who wanted to get rid of him and would kill him. But how did Jesus know all of this? Jesus knew because this was all part of God's plan. God's plan? God was planning for Jesus to be betrayed and to die? Why would God plan such horrible things to happen to Jesus? Well, remember that word that we mentioned before our story, sacrifice? It was part of God's plan to be sacrificed. Sacrifice means to give up something for the sake of someone or something else. So what was Jesus being sacrificed for? He was being sacrificed for you and me. Why on earth would Jesus need to be sacrificed for us? Jesus was sacrificed for us so that we could be forgiven of our sins. And the reason that we can get down on our knees and simply ask God for his forgiveness is because Jesus went to that cross and he died for us. Back in the days, there was a ritual that was done when people came to God to ask for forgiveness. People would bring an animal that they would sacrifice to God in order to be forgiven of their sins. When Jesus died on the cross, he took the place of these sacrifices and sacrificed his own life so that through him we can have a direct connection to God and his forgiveness. We no longer have to bring an animal to the altar and sacrifice it in order to receive God's forgiveness. We can stop and talk to God from wherever we are and if we are sincerely in need of his forgiveness, he will give it to us. Jesus made it so easy for us. It wasn't so easy for Jesus to be sacrificed though. He was beaten and mocked. They created a crown out of sharp thorns and they pressed it into the top of his head so that he could wear it. They took nails and hammered it into his hands and feet onto a wooden cross. And they lifted that cross upright so everyone could see it. He was dehydrated and he needed some water but they gave him something bitter to drink instead. These people were so cruel to Jesus and put him through so much pain. It's extremely hard to think about the pain and suffering that Jesus went through. But he did it because he loved us so much. Jesus thought that we were worth this sacrifice. And this will always be the most beautiful love story that demonstrates the highest form of love. This story gets even better. Jesus' body was taken down from the cross and he was placed in a tomb, which is basically just a big stone cave. The people who wanted Jesus to be killed had heard him telling people that after he died, he would rise again. They did not want this to happen. They were also worried that one of Jesus' followers might come along and try to steal his body. So they had a guard placed in front of the tomb to ensure that none of this happened. But three days later, and this is the part where it gets better, an angel came down from heaven and the guard was no match for this angel. The angel rolled away the stone that was in front of the tomb and guess who walked out of there? 
You already know it. It was Jesus. Remember the second word that we had mentioned before our story? Resurrection. When people say that Jesus was resurrected, it means that he was brought back to life. How is this possible? Remember, Jesus is the Son of God. He is so much bigger than any grave. We don't have to cry over the death of Jesus because he's not dead. He's alive. He overcame death and the grave so that you and I could have eternal life in heaven one day. Jesus died on the cross and came back to life so that we could have God's love, forgiveness, and everlasting life. And this is what Easter is all about. We remember what Jesus did for us on that cross. During this time of year, you see Easter eggs and Easter bunnies and lots of chocolate being advertised. And if you're part of AOP Kids, you know that we love having a big Easter egg hunt and doing other fun Easter activities. However, we never want the fun Easter traditions to overtake what Easter is about. Easter is all about what Jesus did on the cross and we should never forget that. An easy and fun way that we can ensure to keep Jesus at the center of Easter is by singing and dancing to your favorite resurrection song. Praise Jesus for what he's done. You can also spend time with your family and talk about the Easter story. You can make it a tradition every year to go through the story of Jesus' death and resurrection every Easter. If you love arts and crafts, spend some time creating a painting or a drawing that represents what Jesus did for us on the cross. There are so many things that we can do. One thing we shouldn't forget to do is simply thank Jesus. Thank Jesus for giving his life so that we can have the opportunity to have everlasting life with him. All right, maybe you've heard this story a hundred times before, or maybe it's your first time. And maybe you've asked Jesus to come into your heart already, or maybe you have no idea what it means to ask Jesus to come into your heart. Today, we want to take some time to pray with you so that you can have this everlasting life. All you need to do is invite Jesus into your heart. Inviting Jesus into your heart is as easy as asking him. Even if you've done this before, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to have eternal life. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to have eternal life. Please forgive me of all my sins. Please forgive me of all my sins. Come into my heart today. Come into my heart today. Remind me every day of your love. Remind me every day of your love and forgiveness. And forgiveness. Teach me to show your love to others. Teach me to show your love to others as you have shown me. As you have shown me. Thank you for taking your place in my life. Thank you for taking this place in my life. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Boys and girls, if you just said that prayer, then we believe that Jesus is now in your heart and you now have the opportunity to have everlasting life in heaven. Woohoo! So right now, there are thousands of angels that are rejoicing and you should be rejoicing too. We hope that you have a blessed Easter weekend. Don't forget to share the good news with your friends and your family. Tell them what Jesus did for us and share his love. And as always, we love you and we are praying for you. If you aren't already following us on Instagram and Facebook, make sure that you do that so that you can keep up to date with all of our latest news. Stay safe and stay blessed.